Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and I'm going to do something I've wanted to do for quite a while now. I'm going to take some of the various things I have in my display or just in my general collection and photograph them. Now I have no formal training when it comes to photography, I have no formal training when it comes to any of the stuff I do, but that hasn't stopped me before. So I figured rather than just take the pictures and post them on the DeviantArt page for everyone to see, I might actually also catalog my experience in doing this sort of thing. Do a little sort of self-critique in the video, see what worked, what didn't, and show you my progress as I go along this particular thing. So, got access to a good camera, but where and what am I going to photograph? So I'm starting this in the dead of winter, and winter means snow. In particular, it has snowed out in the garden that I do all those Garden of Omni videos in. I am venturing out into the cold despite my better judgment because I have an idea for what I can do to start this off. And it involves snow cover. Particularly, I will be photographing in this general area. I think this will make a good backdrop for what I intend to do. So now... All I need are some subjects to photograph, and I have just the creatures in mind. Here are my three subjects. I'm not going to do all of them at once, of course, but I'll explain it in a moment. What I have here are the Bandai figures for the 2004 versions of Godzilla and Gigan, and the Titanic Creations original creature Titanicus. Follow the links if you want to see a review of that figure. Now why am I picking these guys? Well, Titanicus is going to be in a solo picture, because he's an ice-based kaiju, as you can see from the different aspects of his design, and I think putting him in snow and ice and whatnot, that's appropriate. As for Godzilla and Gigan, if you've seen Godzilla Final Wars, which these two versions appeared in, you will of course know that their first battle is in Antarctica. So I'm going to try taking an image that invokes that first battle. I doubt I'll be able to recreate it exactly, but I'll come up with something that at least has that feel to it. Or at least that's my intention. So, now you know where I'm working and what I'm working with. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it, and the next thing you see will be the photographs themselves, and my own commentary on what I think of how they turned out. See you then! Alright, I wound up taking five pictures of Titanicus and six pictures of Godzilla and Gigan. We'll start with the Titanicus pictures in order. This was the first one I took. Have to declare this one a bust because the garage is in the background. You can clearly make out that this is a larger backdrop than Titanicus. He's supposed to appear large and he clearly does not. This one I basically have to declare a bust. It did not turn out the way I had wanted it to, so moving on to the next one. For the next shot, in order to avoid getting anything I didn't want in the background, I took a top-down picture of Titanicus, where the background would mostly be comprised of the snow that surrounds him. For the most part, I'd say it works, though there's a little bit at the top that still doesn't quite look right, so maybe if I crop it a little, that might alter it. You'll see the results of that on DeviantArt if I actually manage to pull that off successfully. Otherwise, though, this certainly is a better shot. Curiously, though, only a certain portion of Titanicus wound up getting focused on. The horn, the closer it gets to the lens, is out of focus, as is the tail as it gets farther away. It does make for an interesting effect, I admit, but is it necessarily what I want to go with, and does it actually look good? That I'm not so sure about, but it turned out better than the first one, at least. Before we move on to image number three, I did manage to crop down image number two. I tightened it a little at the top and at the right. So there's not as much space in those areas, and you can see less of the backdrop, if you will. There's more white around him. And while that does take away some of the distracting elements of the background that give away that this is not a large creature, it also takes away a lot of things and just makes it look like Titanicus is standing against a white backdrop. So 
Well, this didn't really turn out the way I had hoped it would. I thought it would look better having Titanicus surrounded by snow. Instead, it just kind of looks plain to me. I don't know, maybe I'm being too hard on myself, but I feel like I could have done better with this. For the third shot, I decided to adjust the lens and get another level picture of Titanicus. This one I managed to get without the buildings in the background. There's still some plant matter in there, but since it's out of focus, you can't necessarily tell what it is, so the natural aspect of it could still potentially work. And since it's all out of focus, it creates that nice little sense of Titanicus being the thing that your eye is drawn to. And thanks to the pose, you wonder, is he looking at something? Is he roaring a challenge, or is he just proclaiming his dominance over this particular domain? It could be interpreted a number of different ways. I certainly think this picture turned out far better than the previous ones. Tried framing a shot where I was angled up to give Titanicus a sense of scale, the worm's eye view lens, if you will. Clearly it did not work. Titanicus is just starting to get out of frame with his horn cut off at the top. You can see the masonry in the background. The plants don't exactly frame him just right. Once again, this one was kind of a bust. So I tried adjusting it again. This time I overcompensated and went too high. You can see the top of the tree line that frames the garden. You can see other trees in the background. You can see that garage again. Yeah, um, this didn't turn out well at all, so that's where I decided to end with Titanicus and move on to Godzilla and Gigan. So my first shot was sort of a semi-level confrontational look. The shot of the two opponents facing each other. I figured having the masonry in the background this time might not be too bad, and... I guess it doesn't look awful, but then again, there's also far more space along the top of this image than I really should have included. Didn't really notice that when I was looking through the lens, so while the picture itself isn't necessarily bad, it's also not the best I could have done. So I attempted to crop this one as well. This one I cropped on the top and on both left and right sides, tightening it up to try and obscure the mason work as much as I could. Uh, get rid of the lines that separate the different blocks and make the background look more like it's a natural stone formation, while also tightening the focus on the monsters who are the actual subject of the piece. I think that winds up working just a little bit better. Again, it's not perfect, but it's much closer to what I was hoping it would look like than the original picture turned out. So I tried it again. Now Godzilla's starting to get out of focus. Gigan isn't really in the frame. Didn't turn out too well in that regard either. So at this point I decided maybe it's the location that's throwing me off here. I should probably move them to a different spot and try getting pictures from there. And maybe I can also try something a little different as opposed to just this sort of generic one on the left, one on the right shot. This was my first attempt at getting something different. An over-the-shoulder shot where Godzilla is in the foreground and Gigan is in the background. I positioned Gigan so that he'd be in sort of an attack pose, like he's charging in. As you can see, Godzilla is very clearly in focus, but Gigan, along with the rest of the background, is kind of blurry. He's not as blurry as everything behind him, but still kind of blurry. Hopefully that makes it look like he might be in motion. I'm not entirely convinced that I believe that rationalization myself. But at the same time, it does sort of make for an interesting dynamic between the two. Clearly, our focus is on Godzilla, we're seeing this from his perspective, and Gigan is the oncoming threat. So, I decided to invert it for the next picture. Same location, only now Gigan is the one with the over-the-shoulder shot, and Godzilla is the one in the blurry background. Again, there is the possibility that this could look like Godzilla is in motion, but probably doesn't look that way at all. Even so, I'm glad with the way Gigan was framed, he turned out quite well, and I'm only just now noticing that tiny little bit of red paint on that one spike on his neck. 
did not notice that before, but oh well, that's just how the figure came. Tried pulling out to get a slightly wider shot to see if that would help. Now the only thing in focus are Gigan's wings. So that looks terrible. Not satisfied with this one at all. And for the final shot, I decided I would do something different from the other ones. Have it clearly shown that Gigan has been defeated and Godzilla is victorious. Positioned him so that he's got one foot pinning Gigan down. Gigan is clearly in no position to fight. And this one turned out okay, I suppose. I think it's a nice little bit of detail that the snow is on their feet and whatnot, so that sort of lets you know that this isn't green screen or anything. They really are out in the snow, and the snow is leaving residue, so adds a sense of reality to it. Godzilla's head is out of focus again. I'm kind of frustrated that that happened. Again, maybe you could rationalize it to be that it's in motion, even though it's not. But uh, this one's kind of a 50-50 split for me. I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. Well, there you have it. That's how all these different pictures turned out. You will be able to see them much clearer on the DeviantArt page, and, well... I'm only just starting out with this. Hopefully I'll be able to do better the next time I go about this process. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.